Oh, welcome to Stampscaping 101. We're going to do a little unboxing and testing in this video. And let's see what we have here. Okay. Um, this is by Gift Boutique. 60 count metallic red sheets, 8.5 by 11. Red foil. Okay, now this is nothing new for me in terms of uh, material, type of material used, but I haven't tried the Gift Boutique um, foil. This is the same um, brand of foil that I use for my silver, and I've been watching um, Amazon just to see when the silver um, was back uh, available for people to buy, uh, as it was sold out for, I don't know, a week or two, especially after I used it in those mirror cards. A lot of times that happens when I, uh, with the gold and silver foil in the past, anytime I've used it, people have wanted it. And these packs, I bought it originally because I was looking for metallic papers and, you know, 60, this one right here, this red, I never would have bought, but it, it was like 13 or 14 dollars, I think for a pack of 60. Now, this is going to last me the rest of my life, so... Um, oops, this one has a dent right here, so I hope it's not dented through the entire pile, but... Um, a lot of the other foils that I saw uh, when I was looking originally, this is a year ago, a lot of packs, I don't know, they're like, I don't know, like a dollar a sheet. 50 cents a sheet or something like that. Really, you know... Uh, Kind of expensive uh, for for in, in comparison to something like this. Okay, so uh, I don't. Know, it's relatively inexpensive, especially when we're talking about things like card stocks and specialty types of papers and whatnot. Okay, so here's the thing. Now this is not new to me in terms of a service. I've been working on these foils now for about a year now. I started experimenting with them last year, around the end of the year. And I've really grown to love them. Okay, so the other pack of colored foils that I've been using are the Recollections Michaels packs, okay? Amazing value there. Um, I, they retail for $6, but they're on sale all the time. Uh, buy one, get one half off. Uh, $3 and just 33 cents, just a flat fee, No, you know, no... You don't have to buy two. There's all kinds of different sales all the time. 20% off, 30% off. But even at the $6 for 25 multicolored sheets um, full price, I found that to be quite a deal. All right? But here's the thing. Okay. Um, the red foil that I've experimented on, and I just did a um, spray sealing video today, uh, well, I covered the, the red foil. But the red foil um, on that, the dyes, or whatever, you know, they use to color these surfaces, um, the red from that recollections, and I tell you, and, and when I was stamping on it too, not just when I spray sealed it, but it seems to really bleed off the surface. So I haven't done an experiment where I just wipe, you know, water on that, that brand of red before. But it just seems to permeate my white ink when applied to it. Now, the white ink I'll be using is the Brilliance ink, okay? And that's a water-based ink. So if it's coming, it's going back into solution using that, um, it must be very, very surface-oriented on that foil to color it um, red. All right? I don't find that experience with all the different colors of the um, Recollections pack. But I think it did happen with a couple of them. Um, so it probably just depends on the chemistry of whatever color um, you're utilizing on those ones. Okay, so here's what I'm doing. On this red, the question is, is this one going to be more fixed? You know, where I can apply white over the top of it without um, it actually, you know, the, the red color actually physically blending with the white. Okay, now sometimes when we apply this, um, our inks are a little bit more translucent. Even though they're not physically mixing, you can see the color underneath the ink. 
and therefore it looks, you know, it would look like pink or something like that when we're doing it in red. But that other, the recollections, I'm, I'm almost sure that it's physically merging with that media, which you can use, you know, to your advantage. You know, you can use it as, you know, a part of the um, whole technique um, of it all. Um, but if you don't want that to be a factor, then um, one of the things I was thinking about doing was spray sealing that um, material before I stamp on it or before I do my techniques and, you know, apply the brilliance ink on it. Okay, so that being said, let's give this a test here. Okay, I'm going to do just a real simple scene on this one. I'll be utilizing nature set number six here with the um, lakeside cabin and pine and background for a row onto the scene. And okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to apply some white pigment ink first. I'll get some clouds going back in here. This will be somewhere, you know, about on the horizon right here. So, uh, or, or maybe I'll just do it midway. Okay, so I'm going to be able to put, I'm going to put some clouds in the background there. Okay, now why do we do that? It's because if I stamp this in, if I stamp this in white over the top of it, it'll look pretty cool as a reverse impression. But if we go black on this type of red right here, this red is so dark, you're really not going to be able to see any contrast. So we have to put down some colors, um, some values in the background that are lighter than our impression, okay? Now th these are interesting too. I mean, you can do other types of inks on this. You can stamp on it with like a, a silver or a gold and make it kind of a festive type of holiday type of um, look. You know, there's other things that you can do um, when utilizing these types of surfaces. You don't have to always just go with black and white or something like that, okay? Um, there's some different um, inks, uh, brilliance inks that are colored, like a red, and it's probably, I don't have them, but they're probably metallic red or, you know, metallic blue. I don't know, you know, but the brilliance inks have a little bit of a sheen to them, so um, I'm guessing that they're, um, you know, they might have a little bit of a, a metallic type of um, quality to them. Okay, now I'm going to go for some different um, layers of depth on this background. So you can see one cloud is kind of, you know, lighter than another, or you can see it as one cloud and just one part of it is lighter than the other. Whatever you want, you know, whatever you perceive that, you know, that could be what it is, okay? So, okay, um, this isn't a technique video on application of, you know, doing clouds here, but I'll mention a couple things that, you know, when we're working with, um, I would call these, they're not opaque inks, okay? They're more translucent, no matter what you use these on. I guess if you really built up some of this pigment ink, it could get to be, you know, quite opaque, meaning you can't see through it, you know, anything underneath it is not showing through. But for the most part, they're, they're pretty translucent, okay? I'm applying this down, and, you know, I've, I've applied a pretty decent amount in most of these areas, but you can see that red um, showing through. Okay, now I'm just speculating here because it's still early, but I'm almost certain that this red foil is not physically mixing with this white ink, okay? I, it, it seems different to me um, than what I remember using that recollections one, okay? I, you know, th there's a different quality aspect to these, okay? You know, that recollections one, it's 25 sheets of different, you know, five different colors, five sheets, and it, it's really inexpensive. I love that stuff, okay? But I'm not expecting the same type of thing. Now, this stuff is really inexpensive, too. You know, it's 60 sheets for, you know, 13 or 14. This was the cheapest um, color they had. I think the silver was the most, and or maybe gold, and, I, and there was one other color. I forget what it was. But um, it's pretty good stuff. There, there's a couple little creases on this, you know, like where they um, 
hold down the um, you know the master sheets of this type of thing and I can see that pressure crease on that you know I I didn't I haven't had that on my other silver and gold ones before so maybe it's just on this one I don't know I don't ex you know this you know when I go into these things I'm not expecting uh, you know if I'm paying a dollar a sheet that's another thing but when you're buying like this really inexpensive uh, media like that I don't know dents in the corners or something like that I just live with it yeah you, you, they could pro they would probably refund your money if you call them up you know Amazon but um, I don't know I probably have and I'm always using quarters like this and if I have a little bit of a dent or something like that I would just I don't know, I would stamp a branch over it or something like that. But anyways, look at that. looks pretty good. I think that, um, I haven't used red too often in the past. But um, I do like the look. I, I like every color, I think, um, of foil. It just has a different kind of emotional I don't know, kind of quality to it. All right, now, okay, that, so the um, lakeside cabin is going to go right about it, right in here. And what I'll do is I'll create this little bit of a, oh, I don't know, light reflection of the water. That's what that's going to represent like that. I know it doesn't look like it now. It looks kind of weird. But that's what it ends up being. You don't have to do this real super carefully, okay? By the time you stamp over this type of thing, um, it all just kind of seems, you know, it, it blends in. So don't sweat it, you know, when you're doing something like that. Okay, now also, um, I mean, this is this foil, okay? This would already be turning a little bit more red on the Recollections one. So what I had to do is I had to layer more um, of the white pigment ink over it to keep building it up, all right? So that's just one of those things that, you know, to keep in mind. And also when you dry this, sometimes it dries um, a little bit more transparent so you get more of that color showing through. If you want it that light again, then hit it with another layer so you can um, apply heat, apply heat, apply heat, you know, however many times you need to do it to achieve the level of opacity and lightness that you're, you know, yeah, that you desire. Okay, so this is going to be the water down here. I'm going to put a few little kind of streaks or scratches in it with a little bit of a straight brush like that. That doesn't look too good. <laughs> I'm kind of removing a lot of it like that, but okay. Um, I do that a lot of times. I'll add those little special D types of uh, texture marks. And then what I do is I go back into it like this because sometimes it just looks too harsh and then you soften up the look a little bit like that. Okay, now this is wet and I can just take my finger and it'll wipe right off, okay? But the thing is with these things is that what you do is you heat set it and then you spray seal it, like I did in my previous video that I just uploaded today. A lot of it was on foils because I was doing the, um, the mirror cards. Okay, so we're going to uh, heat set this now. looking pretty good um, in terms of you know kind of re the retention of you know those lighter values I expected it to kind of um, dry a little bit more transparent you know kind of moving towards transparency I know I wouldn't lose it all but we lost relatively little okay maybe I don't know maybe I applied a lot more white this time around okay so you know this is foil so when you heat set, it's going to bow on you. Try not to keep, you know, the heat in any one area for too long, you know, it's just so, you know, I don't want it to curl up like it's, you know, touching end to end or something like that, but what you do is you just counter bend it, and probably doing it while it's still a little bit warm is probably a good idea, although I don't think you need to, but um, 
until you just get it relatively flat. What I like to do is I like to mount these up after um, we're done. And I think that makes it look a little bit better anyway, so you're mounting it on a nice firm uh, mat or two, okay? All right, so dried white pigment ink, brilliance at least, um, is a great way, you know, a pretty nice surface to stamp on, okay? So I wouldn't stamp it out with like a, a dye-based ink. I just think going with another brilliance ink is going to do it. I don't remember if I've tried, I, I think I might have. I think I might have tried a uh, Versafine clear black over the top of white brilliance and it was surprisingly I thought it would stamp out much much darker and it didn't the best thing to stamp on it was brilliance over brilliance I'm telling you I would get a pad of this because you can use it where you would use your regular pigment ink pads too but this this brilliance pad you know this pigment ink can be stamped on anything you know as opposed to being limited okay so stamping this down Go about like so. Um, you are stamping a pretty thick ink, and uh, it doesn't dry super fast. Okay, we have to heat set it. But as you hold this down, um, light even pressure, or I don't know, adequate even pressure, not super light, um, allow the ink to kind of set into your dried white pigment ink, okay? I think it's permeating a little bit, you know, and grabbing onto that dried ink, you know, before we pull it off. You know, we don't want this to come off like a, like a vacuum, you know, where the ink is still primarily on the stamp itself, okay? So see that you get a really great impression. And I don't know that white base pigment ink on the um, surface, it almost looks like, it acts like a porous material. You know, it's not going to change it into, you know, matte cardstock, you know, or something like that, where you can just do anything to it, but it really accepts the uh, inks really well, you know, convenient for us, okay? All right, so let's see here. Let's, let's stamp some other imagery on here. Um, we'll just keep this one, you know, really quite simple. Let's go for the uh, pine tree in here. Okay. I mean, I could stamp, you know, a foreground on here, but I want this video to be more about kind of the testing of, uh, you know, the surface here, as opposed to, you know, trying to create this, um, you know, a full scene. Although, this, you know, there won't be anything missing here, but we can make it a little bit more elaborate if we wanted to. But for me, I just wanted to test out this paper. And it's a good idea, you know, you don't have to kind of overthink things when you're testing out kind of new uh, materials. I have a go-to type of scene, or I have a few, you know. The Lakeside Cove Large is the one that I often use. Um, Nature Set number eight. And you'll find me when any time I'm testing out kind of a new media and surface combination. A lot of times I'll just use the, uh, the Lakeside Cove Large and uh, some of the imagery around it um, that comes in Nature Set number eight. It's just a really great testing um, collection. Okay. Okay. So here's what I'm saying. You can't really see that tree on there very well can you I mean you can see it like that there it is so that's why we have a lot more of the white in the background of that main image but this imagery here in the foreground it's a little bit more bold and I don't I don't feel like stamping a bunch of things um, a bunch more white in here on this test plus I wanted to see how this imagery would just stamp out directly on the red and it stamped out beautifully okay so this this I would say that this um, foil is a lot more consistent with um, its sibling colors it works just like the gold and the silver do and like here's the silver right here okay 
Um, there's not, it doesn't appear to have um, kind of different characteristics in terms of, uh, you know, the red being on there. Uh, this type of foil does not come in a lot of different colors. I think I've seen over time, over this last year, I think maybe four colors. In fact, I don't know. I don't know if the red was always up there or not. Okay. Okay, so. I don't know. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six impressions with the pine tree stamp stamped um, at different heights to get a slightly different um, look to it. That's what you can always do with your Stampscapes imagery. I designed my stamps with the idea of kind of the whole in mind. It has to look good as a whole, but then I want it to look good in smaller portions as well. Okay, cecitas, trees like that. All right. All right, let's heat set this and let's put on a couple finishing touches. with um, the black is when it dries it really dries flat now the white you can't tell as much because it never goes on and it's never like super shiny looking all right now i got to bow this back here um so when you're, you're drying it you can really see the the change now one of the things i noticed too today when i was spray sealing these is that when you hit this with an acrylic spray sealant it does bring back kind of the, I don't know, the depth of the black, I guess. It look it makes it look like a darker, shiny black when you spray seal it. Now, I didn't, I don't know, I didn't look at an hour later or whatever, or half an hour later, just to see if it still looked like that. But I, I think it probably does. Okay, so that is that. Let's add in a couple little touches to this uh, piece. Let's take a white paint pen, okay? This would be great um, to uh, splatter paint it with white, you know, as a little bit of snow or something like that. I think that would look cool in this piece. I don't know. I mean, you get this red foil, and it, it doesn't have to represent, you know, the holidays or anything like that. But <laughs> that color right there is kind of a festive holiday color, you know, Christmas. It's kind of a, a neutral red. It's not really a warm red or a cool red. Okay, so this area around here, you know, it's dry to the touch. It's not going to come off on my finger or something like that. But if I do kind of scratch it or something like that, it'll scratch. So if you're doing something on here, just cover it up, you know, accordingly like that if you need to get in here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring a little bit of illumination into these windows right here. Or the window. Eh, there's windows on the side too. Okay, you see that right there? I mean, that just makes that stand out a little bit. It looks kind of weird though. I know. So, what you do is you bring a little bit of this lighting into some of these objects underneath there. So, I have illuminated them in the design, okay? In the design, like the tops of the rocks are lighter because I try to create volume and uh, volume in terms of three-dimensional aspect of things. I try to do that in the designs so that when you're doing things like these little touches, you can take a look and just follow my lead in the design. So in the, you, might, you might not be able to see it on this video here, um, but I do have these little striations in the water okay, that are lighter. So I'm just following that lead, and then you get that look right there. See, that looks like that reflection from the window, the lighting reflection, is reflected down in the water as well, and also on those surrounding rocks underneath my light source like that. It doesn't have to be confusing. You just have to observe the objects. So see right here, see that rock right there? 
see it has that lighter top right there. I mean, you don't have to do that, but, you know, highlight it, but you can if you want to. Like, this is getting a little bit farther away from my light source. So I might just put, here, I need to cover up right here. I might just put, you know, a little dot on it like that. Okay, see how it kind of makes those little um, rocks out there on the side. See that? Doesn't it make it look more three-dimensional? It certainly makes it look more lit. Like that. See that lighting in there? And this is really minimal stuff, folks. But you put a little bit more dots on the objects closer to the light source. And as it moves farther away from that, you know, one dot or two will do. Okay, now we have that going on in the background. And your cloud sources, you know, your clouds up there, I mean, they could be lit as well. And we can't see these trees down here. I didn't mean this video to be a, a, a foil illumination kind of thing. But let's talk about it while we're here. Um, I'm putting some of these little dots on these trees, okay? Just to kind of bring it out from the background, okay? We still can't really see the black very well. The black impression over this dark red foil, but when you add these little touches like this, okay, into the scene, it does suggest that tree there. So it kind of brings them out a little bit more. It says that, uh, you know, that those objects are in there, you know, as far as the trees. And, you know, as a result of that highlighting, you know, they kind of come out from the background a little bit more. See that? It kind of looks weird when you look at it like this. It's like, oh my God, what is that? You know, but this is looking at it at arm's distance. And then, you know, this is what people tend to do. It's what I do if I'm looking at one of my cards, okay? But this is what people would do if you sent them a card done with this media combination like this. They do this, because it's really fun. And look at that lighting go across there like that, you know, down here. And you have that those shimmering kind of trees. You can't see the white at all like that. But when you go like that, it really stands out. So it becomes a little bit of a different experience depending on the angle that someone is looking at your piece and areas at. Okay, so a little bit of a framework around here. Mount this on a card, you know, and you can have it fold open or whatnot. This would be a perfect spot for a uh, word stamp up here. Believe it or not, something like this. I don't know, you can put like a couple people down here in a boat or something like this. This red paper like this, this, you know, you can put like Happy Valentine's Day or something like that. You know, with this red. In fact, I, you know, I'll probably do something for uh, Valentine's Day. You know, we'll come up with some uh, kind of alternative, kind of nature-based um, Valentine cards. Um, I tend to do like two birds or something like that in the sky, a couple eagles, a couple birds flying, you know, floating around down here, a couple maybe loons or something like that in the water in the foreground, you know, and that becomes, um, you know, kind of an interesting idea or uh, alternative for um, Valentine's Day imagery, you know, iconography. Okay, so anyways, uh, red foil. I'm looking at this again, and there's no bleed through at all. So this red uh, really did the trick, and there's no bleed through, okay? Uh, it, it even bled through my <laughs> white uh, acrylic paint pens when I added it onto the, uh, the other uh, brand of foil, too, so... But like I said, you can kind of take advantage of that too, and you can take advantage of the merging of media to create these kind of secondary colors like that. On the case of reds and whites, it would be kind of pinkish tones. Okay, so anyways, thanks again for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And if you have any questions, drop me a note in the comment section.